It's been a great market over the last four or five, six months or so for those companies based in the metals market with increased demand pushing up prices. Uh, Theresa, listed here in London and also on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, has just issued interims where underlying earnings, EBITDA, climbing 240 Three percent. This is on a 61.2% rise in revenues. Let's talk to the chief executive uh, of the business uh, and uh, a man who's part of a family that actually owns 40% in Teresa. It's uh, Fivos Perulis. Thanks indeed for, for, for joining us. Just first of all, what's been behind this strong performance? Yeah, thanks. Uh, and thank you for, for hosting me today. So it's been a, an excellent six months for us. And I think it's underpinned firstly by operational improvements at the Teresa mine, particularly in South Africa, where our mining volumes increased uh, to 2.5 million tons of reef mined, which, which is up 8.7% from the comparable period. But this resulting in an increase in PGM production to 75,000 ounces, uh, and that's up 12 uh, odd percent from the prior year, and an increase to 730.7 thousand tons of chrome concentrate up just under 13% year on year. So coupled with that strong operational performance and in line with guidance, uh, we enjoyed the benefits or reaped the benefits, I should say, of a, a very buoyant PGM basket price, which appreciated some 75% uh, from the comparable period to an average of just over $2,800 per PGM ounce, giving us just short of 50% gross profit margin on PGMs uh, and, and really boosting our earnings. And then on the Chrome front, also an appreciation, a, a, a lot more muted at 5% uh, in terms of that exit price at $145 per ton. So the combination of all of that resulting in these uh, exceptional results and, and really it's our best half year. And in fact, if you compare it to full years, our best full year financial performance to date. Yeah, you've also uh, maintained your full year production guidance. These, these are interim numbers, of course. I think you've got full year production guidance of 155 to 165,000 ounces of PGMs and something like around about 1.45 million to 1.55 million tonnes of chrome concentrates. How, how conservative are you in your assessment of where you're going in the future? And part of this answer, I guess, is probably rooted in how the second half is started. Yeah, so, so if we look back at the first half, uh, one of the constraints we had uh, was the weather. In fact, we had uh, some severe rainfall and uh, lightning storms, which uh, limited our operability in the open pit uh, in those instances. So going into the winter season or the second half, it's a dry season for us here. And we're starting to see in the second month of the uh, second half, uh, production increasing and, and efficiencies and operability uh, improving. So, so we're, we're fairly confident in terms of our full year guidance numbers in terms of achieving those, particularly on the volume side. Um, and uh, the efficiencies around recovery are well on way to, to get improved uh, PGM answers and chrome tons. Yeah, um, and just, just very briefly, if you can give us an insight into how the second half has started. I think these numbers for the interims were up until the end of March, weren't they? So you've had, what, around about uh, eight weeks or so in the H2. Correct, yeah. So so in terms of vi mining volumes uh, we're ahead of uh, schedule, in terms of being able to produce the run of mine tons in the open pit, which, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we had some challenges in the first half, uh, so, so above uh, guidance levels. And in terms of chrome tons and PGMs on track to meet those uh, guidance numbers for the, the for the full year, um, and, in, and I think importantly, uh, Jeremy, uh, you know, we we suspended our interim dividend last year due to COVID uncertainties. So we're very pleased that we reinstated that uh, dividend policy and are able to return four US cents to our shareholders in the form of a dividend. Now, our policy is to return 15% of net profit after tax to shareholders. Uh, so the interim dividend is typically a fraction or a portion of that, whereas this equates to around 14% of current impact. So we're hoping to top that up on the back of us meeting those guidance numbers and, and strong cash flows for the second half. You, you mentioned COVID. Uh, let's, let's bring that into the subject discussion. I want to take a look at this in the context of the share price chart, if I can, as well. So let's bring that up and take a look at what's been happening there, because there has been this astounding recovery. Now, we know that 
a lot of companies uh, fell out um, in terms of share price market capitalization so right way down to the covid lows in fact this chart here showing us this is the london listed uh, share of teresa um went all the way down to around about 40 pence a share here we are now at 143 pence we've got a sort of like a 300 percent plus uh, rise on from where we were obviously uh, a good buying opportunity in hindsight but um you you, you mentioned the the covid lows what, what happened with your company last year through uh, from what was basically this time last year for the next three or four months or so, how difficult was it for you as the management trying to organize things and trying to respond to market forces, which I think came back far faster than people really thought they would be coming back on? Yeah, so so it was obviously a, a very interesting time for all of us and challenging to say the least. And, and uh, I must commend our team for, for digging deep and, and showing resilience yeah. throughout yeah. the the uncertainty really, I think, is the word that that sticks to mind. And um, during that period, South Africa went uh, from a complete lockdown to this risk level adjusted lockdown strategy, moving from level five all the way down to the current level one. And what that meant was certain economic curtailments. Fortunately, we were able to operate on a partial basis and not stop our operations throughout the whole of COVID, which had numerous benefits, one of which was that we weren't putting our operations on what's referred to as care and maintenance and having the challenges of restarting mines as some of our deep level uh, peers had to, had to manage and navigate. So while we operated in a reduced environment, uh, we were able to embed the safety culture and put all the systems and controls in place. And we invested fairly significant amounts in terms of uh, clinics, isolation centers, and monitoring, tracking, and tracing tools around infections and infection uh, cases at the mine. So coming into what is perceived to be a third wave here in South Africa now, I think we're well set up and geared to manage uh, the pandemic. And in terms of disruption to, to our project going forward, we don't believe that the risk is very high. Having said that, you know, we, we, there is uncertainty around uh, where the country may end up if, if the virus does uh, spread out of control. It's, it's nice to hear some positive news life stories coming out of, of, of corporate world, I think, and, and companies like yourselves obviously must be commended for doing what you can in order to help the communities in which you're operating. Um, during during the year as well, I noticed actually coming out from today's numbers, your cash flow uh, is now positive. I say positive, it was negative or in deficit this time last year, but I know at the full year you had a positive cash flow. What difference does this make as well to the business? You spoke a little bit about the dividend. Presumably it does support your dividend strategy. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the the cash flow from operations was uh, at a, over a hundred and four million dollars for the six months. So, a really meaningful cash generation uh, for the business. What this allowed us to do is settle our long term uh, debt and uh, revolving facility, some thirty six million dollars of of loans that we had in the business. Uh, we ended the half with seventy eight million dollars of cash in the bank and around $41 million of debt resulting in that net cash positive position of just shy of $30 million. So, so it allows us to grow organically, uh, invest in our business. Uh, you will note that we, we are in the middle of constructing our Vulcan processing plant, which sees us producing an additional 20% or 400,000 tons of chrome. And that's being funded from these cash flows. So it gives us a lot of flexibility and obviously last but not least, being able to share uh, with our shareholders in these, in these proceeds. Of course, it's all about delivering shareholder value, isn't it? Let's just quickly bring the share price back if we can and talk a little bit more about where we're going to go from here. Because, um, we've, as I say, we've seen this really big uplift. But in fact, what's happened is in the last couple of days, uh, we've what, hit 152 pence here in London. That was levels last seen, I think, in March 2017, I think it was. So we, you have been here before. Where do you go from this point, bearing in mind what you're talking about now, about the outlook for the company over the next 12 months or so? So just even if we looked at it at a, as a snapshot in terms of our cash generation and, and earnings for this half, uh, we're trading at, uh, at a very low EV to EBITDA uh, multiple. If we look at our peers in the PGM industry in particular, uh, their multiples are considerably higher. So I think without banking on an increased cash flow or, or positive uh, growth in the second half, 
uh, I think there's there is upside equity value uh, from current levels and and certainly the chat amongst existing shareholders is to say you know we're we're due uh, this re-rating and and uh, and looking forward to it uh, materializing. Yeah, well, let's let's hope that the um, the environment in which you're trading, especially down in South Africa, is it does improve sometime soon, and that we can get to over this uh, this pandemic. But in the meantime, look, thanks indeed for taking time out of your day uh, to talk to us, uh, Fibos. It's a pleasure to catch up with you again about what's happening at the company. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so That's Fibos Perulis. He is the he's the chief executive of Teresa. For more videos like these, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.